you know, apocrypha, which is the Bible, how uh, the ten tribes came over to the Americas in order to do work. And these ten tribes were referred to as what you call Native American Indians, the Indians of Central America, throughout the Caribbean and South America. Now, this is the book of Second Ezra, the 13th chapter, the 40th verse. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king. So this Hosea was the king of Israel during that time when the nation of Israel was split into two. God the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Now this time Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, took this, uh, the ten tribes out of Israel and took them into his country which is up in Assyria. Read on. Whom Solomon asked was the king of Assyria, led away captives, for they were into slavery under the Assyrians. Read on. And he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. He took them over the waters, which is now of Assyria. So he came from the land of Israel to his land of Syria as slaves. Read on. Right. And that's also made mention of in the book of Kings, second Kings, 17 chapter. Right. Verse 41. But they took this council among themselves. So who took this council? The ten tribes, including the tribe of Dan, who was also absorbed into the rest of the tribes of Israel. They took this council among themselves. Read on. That they would leave the multitude of the nations and go forth into a further country. They said, listen, Israel, our brothers, we're going to leave this part of the world where these heathen, these nations are occupying, and we're going to go forth into another country. Read on. Where there's never mankind dwelt. At that time, when they made this statement, no other nation of people were dwelling in what they called the New World, which is called the Americas. It was unoccupied. We are the 32. The they right there, keep their fasting, which they never kept in their own land. They said, if we could leave this promise, we're going to another world, another promise of, of the earth. We might keep our laws and statutes, which we never did kept. We are. And they entered into your praise. Now, this is going to knock out that big, place of life that we taught the two sisters that the Indians came from the various trees. That's what it says. It says, they entered into the Euphrates. Where is the Euphrates? It's, up, it's above Iraq, in the Middle East. They came to the Persian Gulf because the Euphrates extend all the way down to the Persian Gulf. Read off. By the narrow passages of the river, by the narrow passages of the river to the Euphrates, and then came all the way down to the, uh, the Persian Gulf. Read on. For the most high then showed signs for them. The most high showed the signs in the heavens. So they navigated by the stars. And who was doing this? The tribe of Issachar, the so called Aztecs, what you call the Mexicans. We are. And else still the flood, for they were passed over. So the most high had through the rough seas and people were passed through. We are. For through that country, there was a great way to go. For through that country was a great way, a long way to go. Coming from all the way from water from the, uh, the Persian Gulf, coming all the way down to uh, Africa, the, uh, the coast of Africa, the east of Africa. It was a long way to go. We are. Namely, of a year and a half. And it took them a year and a half. Why? Because you have to make stuff. To get what? Water and maybe food. So it took a year and a half to get from the east all the way to the west, which is known as the Americas, the New World. Read off. And the same region is called Arthur. And that same region is called Arthur, meaning another land, which is known as America. After that, they came to the Americas. Read off. Shalom, all brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel, we'll scattered abroad in greetings in the name of King Jesus Christ, Mahasha. The tribe of Dan. We're going to go into that controversy today. The word Dan, the fifth son of Jacob, Danya, Yada, Ya, Na. Yada, Ya, Na. Meaning, Dan, uh, Dan, Yada, Yana, the fifth son of Jacob, means judge. So what happened uh, to the tribe of Dan? In the history, he was a real guard during the Exodus in the book of Numbers chapter 10 and 25. The land area given to them in Israel. Let's go to Joshua chapter 3 and verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 3. Excuse me. Because there's a lot of controversial Israelite brothers out here 
picking up the uh, Bible and they're not understanding the spirit and these things that uh, pertain to the, the history of the Israelite tribes. So if you don't get the right information, you're going to go into blasphemy and lies and condemnation. Christ said, be honest, prove the truth, teach the truth, and bring out things for edification for the 12 lost tribes of Israel. Let's go to jo uh, Joshua chapter 13, verse 3. It is written, and it says, Now Joshua was old and, and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, God old and are stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. This is a land that yet remaineth. All the borders of the Philistines and all Gashuri, from Shehor, which is before Egypt, even unto the borders of Ekron, northward, which is counted to the Canaanite. Five lords of the Philistines and the Girgashites and the Ashkenites and the Eshkelonites and the Gigites and the Ekronites and the Arabites from the south of the land of the Canaanites and me Noah that is beside the Zidonians and to a peck in the borders of the Amorites. See that? And the land of the Gibbites and all Lebanon toward the sunrise from Baal our God unto Mount Hermon and the entering into Hammer. All the inhabitants of the hill country from Lebanon unto Mes Hosomai and all the Zidonians. Them will I drive out from before the children of Israel, only divide them unto Lot unto the Israelites for an inheritance as I have commanded thee. See? Between Judah and the Mediterranean Sea. So, they failed to conquer the Philistines as they moved northward to Lashish in Judges 18.29. See, this is the land areas that we had in that time. So let's go to uh, Judges 18. Uh, eight, uh, Judges 18 and verse 29. So this is what it says in verse 29. It says, uh, let's go to Judges. That's the next chapter. Here you go. 1829. It says, and they call the name of the city. Oh, here you go. Let's start up a little bit there. It started 25. And the children of Dan said unto him, Let not thy voice be heard among us, lest anger fellows run unto thee, and thou lose thy life and the lives of thy household. And the children of Dan went their way. And when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back unto his house. And they took the things which Micah had made, and the priests which he had, and came unto Lashish, unto a people that were at quiet, at quiet and secure. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and burnt the city with fire. And there was no, there was no deliverer, because it was far from Zion, and they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley that lied by Beth Rahad, and there built a city and dwelt there. And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of the uh, uh, after the name they named the city Dan, after the name of Dan their father, who was born unto Israel. How big the name of the city was Lashish at the first. So they went in there and conquered this place called Lashish. And they named it Dan. Joshua chapter 19 verse uh, 40, verse 40. It tells you that also. The city was called Lashish. Samson and Ahab were Danites. 
Judges 18, 1 to 29, and Exodus chapter 31, verse 6, and Judges chapter 13, verse 2 to 24. And you read about that story of Samson in the Bible, the man of great strength, but he had no wisdom because he was weak for women. Now, this is where they dwelt at until the time came when Paul, the Assyrian king, had taken them into captivity. Let's go to First Chronicles chapter 5. First Chronicles chapter 5. This is how Dan got up in there. And let's start at uh, verse 26. It says this, it is written. And the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Paul, king of Assyria, and the spirit of Calixomessa, see, king of Assyria. You read about that in 2 Kings chapter 17. And he carried them away, even the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and he brought them into Hala and Haba and Hawa into the river Gozan until this day. They went into the Assyrian captivity. That's how they got over there for their spiritual hoardings. Let's go to First Chronicles chapter 5 and verse 25. See what it says here? And they transgressed against the God of their fathers and went a whoring after the gods of the people of the land. Isn't that like Israel? They never kept the covenant in the Lord. They had no discipline. See? Whom God destroyed before them. So when they broke the law, they were destroyed and carried into the captivity of the Assyrians. Now, they tell you that they were going to be taken out of there. Now what happened to the ten tribes? Let's go and show you that in the Apocrypha. After they left that area, they got taken out of there. So they went up there with those tribes. So let's go to 2nd Ezra chapter 13. We're going to start at uh, verse 39. And where if I saw a gathering another peaceable multitude unto him, those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king. You can read about that in 2 Kings chapter 17. Whom Chalasenesa, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and they came into another land. So they went into Hala and Habal, as it's recorded in 2 Kings chapter 17. They went with the Gadites, the Reubenites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and Ephraim, and Asher, and all the other tribes that made up the ten tribes. They went up there too into Assyria. See? And then it says here, But they took them counsel amongst themselves, that they should leave the multitude of the heathen, and go forth into a further country where ne never mankind dwelt. That was called the land of Asus, or the land of the, what you call now called the Americas, North, Central, and South America, and the islands of the sea. We had maps, and we had knowledge of that land because uh, we had, uh, during the time of King Solomon, we had ships, and we had knowledge from the Canaanites, and we dealt with them with commerce, and they were our servants, and we had knowledge of the seas. So the other tribes had it too. We were in the kingdom, so we shared information with our brother. See? And it says here, where, where no, never mankind dwelt, that they might keep their statues which they never kept in their own land. Did our people keep the laws over there? No. They tell you right here. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 17 to prove it. Israel never kept them commandments. They, they rejected them. And they took on bow. That's why they got destroyed um, in, the, in the comings of the Spaniards and the conquistadors later on in history. The ten tribes before Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were brought from the west coast of Africa and we all came into captivity together. This is what it says right here. Uh, 
In verse 9, second, uh, second Kings chapter 17, verse 9. And the children of Israel did it secretly. Those things were not right against the Lord, meaning your voodoo, your black magic, your idols, and your little secret societies you got out here, filled up with faggots and lesbians and lies of the so-called church system. The Lord know about all that stuff that y'all doing out here. And he know about you splinter groups and you rebellious groups out there too. He got you marked too. See what it says here? And they built the high places in their cities from the tower of the watchman to the French city. And they set up them images and groves in every high hill and in under every green tree. Man, and you went into all the abominations of the nations, including human sacrifice. And there they burnt incense in all the high places as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them, meaning the Canaanites, the so-called South Africans, African customs, so to speak, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. And they served idols, wherein the Lord says unto them, Ye shall not do such things. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn you from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes, according to the law that I command your fathers when I set, uh, sent you to you by the servants, the prophets. Notwithstanding, they were not, they were not here, but hardened their necks like the necks of their fathers. And they did not believe in the Lord their power. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant and he made, that he made with their fathers. And his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain. And went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged that they should not do like them. That's where we at today. See, and they left, verse 16, all the commandments of the Lord their God, and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshiped all the hosts of heaven, and served Baal, human sacrifice, sun worship, and many of you today are wrapped up in that Roman Catholicism, because that's what that is, with the white man throughout North Central and South America and islands of the sea. And the Lord got his hand on our people now. And see what it says here? In verse 42, 2 Ezra chapter 13, 42, and they, that they might keep their statues which they never kept in their own land, and they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the flood, till they were passed over. But though that our country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same region is called Osir. So they went from Assyria, went around the land of so-called Ham, called Africa today, and sailed with ships to the land we call the America City. That's what happened to Dan, Ephraim, Manasseh, God, Reuben, Asher, Naphtali, uh, Issachar. That's why I know all them tribes. I didn't name them all, but that's what happened to the ten tribes. So what you talking about? That's how they got over here to the so-called Americas. And then it says here, then dwelt they there until the latter time. So from that time of the Assyrian captivity to the time when Judah fell in 70 AD, went into the land of Africa, and came over here to the Americas. It says, then they dwelt they there until the latter times, and now shall they begin to come. Those are the three other tribes of Israel. And we all came over here together. We were enslaved and whipped and torn as a nation together. And that's how them ten tribes got over here. But Moses wrote about Dan. He gave you his tribal markings. So he's down somewhere in these areas with the other ten tribes. He might be in the Caribbean. He might be near the reservations. He might be. Dan might have migrated all over the place. But let's show you what the Lord said they're going to end up at in the last days. Let's go to Deuteronomy 33. All right. And we're going to start at uh, verse 22. This is Dan concerning Dan. And Dan, he said, Dan is alive as well. He shall eat from Bashan 
That's a fertile region east of the Sea of Galilee in the Bible Dictionary. So that's where he went up there in that area near, near Lashish. And that's where they uh, stayed up there until they were taken out of their body of Syrians. Genesis 49 and 17 to 18 to tell you where we're going to end up at. That's his tribal market. But where he's going to end up at in the last days. Dan is still here. It's just that Dan is mixing with the other tribes. His spirit is still here. And this is why when you go to certain camps and certain Israelite brothers, they don't have no understanding of that. So they have to be taught this and submit to it. Because it's in the spirit of the Lord and it's in this prophecy. Genesis chapter 49 verse 17. It is written. It says this about Dan. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path, meaning Dan is what? Subtile. Snakeish, so to speak. That's that's what he means. That biteth the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backwards. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. So Dan is waiting for the second coming. And Dan is waiting for the Israelite tribes to come back. Way of, of, of an adder in the path, meaning what? I have waited you on thy salvation, O Lord. Meaning that Dan has that mark. Like that. So wherever he is over here in the Americas somewhere, we will find out. And if brothers have that information, we can show people where Dan is. But this is what the Spirit has showed me to this point about the tribe of Dan. So that's why when you read in the book of Revelations, uh, it tells you in Revelations uh, chapter 7 and so forth, and it tells you about the gathering of the tribes. And when you go in there, it tells you about all the other tribes. See what it says here? Zebulon, it tells you about the, the tribe of Naphtali, Sealing of the uh, uh, tribe of Benjamin, see the tribe of Joseph, which was Ephraim and Manasseh, and the Ephraimites led the other tribes over here and they pushed them over here. So, this is what happened to Dan. So, Dan is mixed in amongst them tribes, his spirit is still here, but this is what happened to the tribe of Dan. This is the biblical proof, the archaeology, and the prophecy according to what? The Holy Bible, King James 1611. Shalom, brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel.